Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today we've got five simple steps for installing and waterproofing fiber cement board walls for your shower. After this video, you'll be ready for tile. So let's get started on Modern Builds. Step number one is cutting your fiber cement board. And we're using half inch, three foot by five foot panels for our shower walls. This stuff goes by the product name Hardy Backer. But there's multiple products and brands that are basically the same. This tool is called a scoring knife and it's what we're gonna use to make a groove that will snap along our fiber cement board. Once it's ready, make sure and put pressure down on your straight edge and then pull the end of the cement board to you. Everything should go great if you've made a groove that's deep enough. And in this clip, you can see what happens if your groove isn't deep enough or if you don't support the break with whatever straight edge you're using. For this clip, I counted a total of 11 scores. I also paid a little bit of attention to each end. That way I could get a really clean break. I'll put a lot of weight here on my straight edge and we should get a clean break. Beautiful. And what's great about this is it's really low dust. You can also use a sharp utility knife for this. Just know that you'll run through blades. And this takes about the same number of passes or scores. The nice thing about being able to use a utility knife is that pretty much everyone has one and you'll need one on hand anyways because it's great for cleaning up corners. A jigsaw is also effective for cutting fiber cement board. Just make sure you mask up before you do. And you can see how I offset my board an inch and a half. The jigsaw is my favorite powered saw to use because the blades are super cheap. You can get a big pack for just like 10 bucks. A circular saw also works, but I wouldn't want to sacrifice my super nice blade. It's also totally possible to do a long, even thin rip cut on a sheet of this hardy backer board. It can be a little bit difficult to break, but if you're ever struggling with trying to snap a small piece, you can use a hammer on the seam with something underneath and that should loosen everything up. This whole hammer idea also applies to small cutouts. You don't need a jigsaw or a power tool to make them. Just make a deep groove where you want the break to be with your scoring knife and then support the backside with a straight edge. Then the hammer should knock that loose. And you can clean everything up with a utility knife. A diamond disc on an angle grinder is maybe one of the smoothest cutting tools for fiber cement board. Plus you can cut tile and stuff with it too. And that's step one complete. And now we're moving on to step two, installation. So here comes our first piece. And the first thing we're gonna do is just make sure it fits. And then I'll use a couple of screws as spacers so that this sits about an eighth inch off of our mortar bed. The screws I'm using are made for fiber cement board and they're inch and five eighths. And that matches half inch thick material. Next, I'm just gonna grab my level to make sure that everything's sitting plumb. And now that looks really good. And be sure to come in a couple of inches from your edge so the screw doesn't damage the sheet. And before we get too far into it, I'm going to extend a line where I've got wires and nail plates covering the stud. It's best to space these rows about 12 inches. I'm going to do three rows, which is pretty close to that. And be careful you don't over torque these screws. I'll show you what I mean. The screw should stop when it's flush with the surface of your cement board. You don't want this to recess into it. Pretty much follow the same rules as drywall. It's also a bad idea to install this bottom row of screws too low because you don't want to puncture the pan liner where there might be standing water. That's one piece down. And this is one nice thing about pre-cutting all your pieces is you can just go. In between each piece, we also want an eighth inch gap. So I'll throw a screw there and a screw here. The reason for that eighth inch gap is it allows a little bit of space for thin set to set into and bond all of those pieces and seams together. To finish out this side, I'll utilize our leftover pieces. I really wish these were about an inch and a half taller. Whenever I was using these smaller pieces, I made sure to custom cut everything to length so that they all met on vertical two by four studs. That way there was plenty of material to screw onto. I just need to make sure and avoid this nail plate as well with this small piece to finish out this side. That's one full side complete. Measuring and cutting for obstacles like this mixing valve is easy. I'm just gonna measure off of this wall to measure how far it is on each side. That's 20 and a half to 26 and a quarter. And here it's four and three eighths to eight inches. I'll transfer those marks to my cement board and I'll make sure to subtract an eighth inch for our gap. And I'll show you how you can cut this with a scoring knife. Although a good alternate is a jigsaw. And next I'll score it into segments like a pizza. 
and now we'll knock it out. Remember, the more you score and the deeper you score, the cleaner this whole break will be, but the utility knife comes in clutch to get this all finessed. I'll use the diamond wheel on my angle grinder to make this carve out for the niche. It should help preserve this thin sliver on the end. I was honestly a little surprised that that one inch piece held on. Really cool. Okay, let's see how it fits. Perfect! The only thing unique about attaching this panel is that niche, and I made sure to put screws all the way around the borders. A carbide or diamond tipped hole saw is great for the shower outlet, but you could also use a spade bit. I used an inch and a half hole saw, and that's plenty of room for the shower arm to thread through. Anything bigger really is unnecessary. I used more cutoff material to finish up this wall, then I moved to the back. And using this tall piece should help us stagger our seams, which I like. Staggering the seams should just help prevent any cracks or shifting over time. And I used this blue tape on the mortar bed to mark the stud location since I wouldn't be able to see them. Last piece, here we go. It was a little tough getting a screw in there as a spacer, so I used my chisel to wedge open a little bit of a gap and fit it in there. The shower is still far from done, but man, it's transformed a lot here in step two. That's boards up. Uh. Moving on to step three. On all of our seams where our panels meet, we're gonna install seam tape and apply thin set to seal all of our cracks. And be sure you're using tape made for cement board. You'll apply the tape to all of your vertical and your horizontal seams, and it's easy to cut it to length if you use the edge of your joint knife. We're also taping and bedding all the corners. They're a little trickier, but you can pick up a specialty corner trowel if you want. And some people out there like to sandwich the tape in between thin set, basically apply a thin layer of thin set, then the tape, and then a little bit more of the mud. But that's not necessary, and the tape should be sticky enough that you shouldn't have any problems. Now I'm working in a remodel, and that means a lot of times you've gotta to adjust to what you've got. And right now my drywall sits proud of the cement board a little bit. So to get them flush with each other, I used my oscillating multi-tool with a flat plunge blade, and I just removed a little bit of material so that I could tape and thin set this just like the other seams. I'm using leftover thin set from my kitchen backsplash. It's pretty standard stuff. It is white though, and that's gonna be pretty convenient to see against this gray fiber cement board. I'll mix this up and I'm looking for a stiff pancake batter consistency, something that'll spread well. The goal is to really utilize the eighth inch gap in between all of our panels. I want a lot of thin set to get in there and embed itself with the tape so that we achieve a really strong bond that prevents cracks over time and a waterproof seal. Keep in mind while you're working that you don't wanna build up a ton of this thin set even though you really wanna embed it into that eighth inch gap. We've eventually gotta put tile on this surface, so we want it to be flat as a reference face for that. I treated the shower niche the same as all of my panels. I made sure there was an eighth inch gap around all the edges, then I applied tape and thin set. I also applied thin set over the face of every screw. Finally, I hit that seam between the cement board and the existing drywall with some thin set, and this is step three complete. Moving on. Step number four is getting our curb ready for tile. And I've already gone ahead and pre-cut three pieces of fiber cement board. One for the outside, the inside, and the top. The first piece I'll attach is the outside face. I'll screw this down and make sure it's flush with the pan liner. Next, I'll attach the top piece, and you can see that I'm screwing it towards the outside half of the piece, and that's gonna be past where our shower door sets. And finally, I screwed in the inside piece, and I attached these screws towards the top of the board. I wanna get ahead of the comments that are gonna say that I shouldn't puncture the shower liner, and I agree 100% if I was not using Red Guard in the next step to waterproof everything. That's step number four complete. I'll let that cure overnight, and we'll be back tomorrow for step number five. But first, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to build your own website or online store. And now with Blueprint AI, that has never been easier. All you've gotta do is tell Squarespace a little bit about your brand or your business, and it'll create a custom tailored design template, and editing from there is a breeze. Squarespace online stores are super powerful and there's no limits to the number of products you can sell and online customers have flexible payment options from credit cards to Apple Pay, even PayPal. And now in eligible countries, customers can buy now and pay later using Clearpay and Afterpay. Last but not least, I'm gonna highlight Squarespace's online courses where you can turn your knowledge into income. 
Squarespace has all of the tools to create your course from scratch and then once it's up you can set your paywall whether that's a one-time fee or a recurring subscription charge. So to learn more make sure and follow my link down in the description at squarespace.com slash modern builds and then when it's time to make your website live don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site store or custom domain through Squarespace. As always, huge thanks to Squarespace for supporting Modern Builds content and you all for watching. Now let's finish up this shower. This is RedGuard. It's a liquid waterproofing membrane and there's a few other products out there that are like this. We're going to paint this on the walls of our shower and around the curb so that our fiber cement board backing is 100% shower proof. In fact, you can paint this stuff onto a mortar bed and it can act as a shower pan liner. It's a really cool new product that they didn't have back in the day. It's just a great extra step to make sure that everything is waterproof, where before they had this, shower installs would basically stop at step four. One thing I've seen in other videos is people recommending applying this red guard to the corners really heavy. Now I don't disagree that you want 100% coverage and you don't want to see any spots through the red, but make sure that you don't get any runs. If you cake this on or apply it too thick, it won't be able to cure properly and it'll be more prone to cracking over time. So ironically, it's kind of working against what you want. The directions call for a three quarter inch nap roller, which is pretty aggressive. It holds quite a bit of material, but that's a good thing, especially on this first coat because it really soaks up a lot of material. I've also seen people spread and smooth this with a V-notch trowel. I think that's a way of getting a really thick first coat but for me, I prefer a roller because I paint stuff all the time and I'm pretty much used to it. I applied a little strip of red guard to the subfloor in front of the shower. That's totally not necessary, but I figured it wasn't a bad idea. Then I waited for about an hour or so and did a second coat on everything. On this second coat, the fiber cement board didn't soak up nearly as much like it did on the first. I probably only used about half as much as I did on the first go round. In total, I brushed on three coats of the red guard to all of the interior corners just to make sure I got a really good coat. And on the curb, I applied four. I had a little extra red guard left over, so I figured I might as well use it. And quick tip, it's a good idea to peel your masking tape before this cures because it turns into a rubber film that's pretty hard to peel the masking tape away from. And with that, step five is complete. We're done. So check it out. This is how everything looked the next day when it had cured. Taking the time to mask everything cleanly definitely paid off around the niche and around all of my edges. Our walls are waterproof, our mortar bed is ready, let's get some tile. I really hope you've learned something. Make sure and like and comment down below any other helpful tips that I might have missed. I've definitely grown my skills a lot during this shower build and I appreciate you all for following along. And we'll see you next time on Mike's First Flip. It's Mike's First Flip. This is very red. Thanks for watching.